The recent return of Super Heavy left the world in awe, realizing, oh, a launch pad can do something like that. That's when we truly started paying attention to SpaceX's launch pad. But in the future, as countless similar and miraculous moments repeat themselves, SpaceX will undoubtedly need a more powerful launch pad. And that's exactly what Elon recently revealed about a new insane launch pad. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And as always, thank you so much for joining us. All right, so as we know, SpaceX's current Starship launch pad has undergone unimaginable destruction before taking on its present appearance. Indeed, who would recognize this as the launch pad that has served Starship through its test flights? I still can't believe my eyes when comparing the past launch pad to its state after Starship's fifth launch. But that doesn't mean SpaceX's current launch pad, that's launch pad A, is considered stable as refurbishment still takes a significant amount of time and effort for SpaceX. And this is not the ultimate goal of Elon for a rapid rocket turnaround. And because of this, the new engineering project being constructed nearby has completely abandoned the old launch pad design and replaced it with a new one. Not only is it new, but it's also capable of withstanding far greater power than the combined thrust of 33 Raptor 2s, as Elon said in an announcement on X. The new launch pad is already designed for the 10,000 tons of thrust version, which is almost exactly three times more powerful than the Saturn V moon rocket. Indeed, it's clear that SpaceX is progressing steadily in the development of Starship rockets. There's no reason for them to stop now, and currently SpaceX teams and Elons are accelerating the research and development of new Starship versions. The latest version being built is V2, which stands at 124 meters, 3 meters taller than the original version, meaning that the total thrust of the Super Heavy booster must also be improved to 8,240 tons. However, even when Starship V2 exerts its full force on the launch pad, it still won't be the limit of what this new launch pad can endure. That's because SpaceX plans to develop Starship V3 which will stand at a towering 150 meters and generate a thrust of 10,000 tons, the highest of any rocket ever built. This could explain why the old system is no longer suitable and a new system is required that can handle every launch without causing damage to the ground infrastructure. This new launch pad is completely redesigned compared to the first pad with significant improvements such as a flame diverter to match the extreme heat and pressure generated during liftoff. The trench system will channel heat away from the launch pad, preventing the wear and tear that was common in previous launches using water-cooled steel plates. The flame trench has proven to be highly effective in tests, helping to make the launch pad more durable for repeated high-power launches, a critical factor as SpaceX moves towards higher launch frequencies in the future. Additionally, many other upgrades are based on lessons learned from Pad A. Recent images from a flight show clear progress in the construction of the flame diverter, with most of the excavation work on the west side of the pad already finished. SpaceX has also begun expanding the excavation area around the launch pad, possibly to install more ground infrastructure. Most of the notable advancements is the debut of the Mobile Orbital Launch Mount System. Unlike the current fixed system, the new Mobile OLM will allow for easier maintenance and quicker refurbs. This mobility enables fast repairs or replacements of critical components, ensuring that launch ops can continue with minimal downtime. The new launch pad has two main parts, the upper section, which has a circular cut, and the lower section, which is smaller and has a larger square cut. The circular section features a similar design to the launch pad ring on pad A, integrating both the hold-down clamps and the Raptor quick disconnect system to initiate the outer engines. The key difference with the new launch pad lies in the base. Unlike the previous pad, which only had a large ring attached directly to the legs, the lower square section can act as a connecting adapter between the launch ring and the flame diverter. Observing the base, there is a significant gap between the base and the ground. This gap may be temporary to facilitate construction work. Therefore, this is the right time for SpaceX to consider building more powerful launch towers. As development progresses, both Starbase and other launch sites will need to expand. More towers will be required to support the increasing number of launches, with a goal of 25 flights in the coming years, and potentially thousands in the more distant future. Catching missions will also increase as both Starship and Super Heavy will need multiple launch pads. This expansion will not be limited to just Starbase either. Florida will also need to grow as one tower may not be enough to support the planned frequency of up to 44 Starship flights a year, with more expected in the future. SpaceX may need to take over or build new launch complexes to meet these demands. The future of stronger launch pads is fast approaching. Are you ready for it? Comment yes down there if you agree. 
All right, so while SpaceX has made some great strides in development, the company is facing environmental and legal challenges in the areas where they are seeking to increase their launch frequency. Elon may see Starship as the vessel carrying all of God's creatures, but environmentalists may tell a different story. As Starship prototypes started launching from SpaceX's Boca Chica site, these advocates argue that the company has shown little regard for the wildlife that Elon claims he wants to protect. As a result, it seems that every action SpaceX takes is scrutinized and turned into a reason for fines. Prior to the fifth Starship flight, the EPA and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, that's TCEQ for short, announced that SpaceX had violated the Clean Water Act. Both agencies fined the company 150 grand in September. Then on October 9th, Save RGV filed a second lawsuit over wastewater issues, seeking an additional 56,000 in civil penalties for each day of the violation. In a post on the platform X, SpaceX described the lawsuit as unwarranted and frivolous. Even before before that, since SpaceX installed its water deluge system, environmentalists have filed complaints with Texas state regulators. To this day, and likely the foreseeable future, discontent with SpaceX's water flood system in Texas will likely increase, especially as the company continues building new infrastructure, including launch towers and pads in the area. For upcoming Starship flights, as part of an agreement with the EPA and Texas regulators, SpaceX will be required to conduct wastewater tests after each launch and submit the results to the regulatory agencies. Disputes over water discharge have already caused several months of delays, but they could lead to bigger headaches. Currently, the only place SpaceX is actually allowed to test Starship is the launch pad at Boca Chica. To get it flying, SpaceX hopes to double the number of orbital test launches they can perform from 5 to 25 a year, roughly one every two weeks. However, the legal troubles aim to halt plans to increase the number of launches until the FAA does a more comprehensive environmental review. It's been difficult for SpaceX as the FAA suddenly suspended the process to increase the number of launches to 25 per year at Boca Chica. The agency is now reviewing the environmental assessment necessary to permit more frequent launches. This means that at least for now, the company's limited to five launches a year. It should be said that SpaceX deserves to be allowed more as they've got a valid reason to rapidly develop Starship. The rocket plays a crucial role in the company's future plans. Before any potential trips to Mars, it's expected to launch a new generation of internet sats into orbit, allowing the company to significantly expand its Starlink network. NASA also paid around $4 billion to use the rocket as part of their mission to return astronauts to the moon. This is the hope of us space enthusiasts, recognizing all the potential that SpaceX brings to the table. However, reality often paints a much sadder picture as SpaceX doesn't just face difficulties launching Starship in Texas, but also struggles with Falcon 9 launches. SpaceX is looking to increase launches from Vandenberg Space Force Base in Santa Barbara County from 36 to 50 launches a year and up to 100 next year clearly to expand Starlink, but some California commissioners have opposed the move, going against consistent decisions of the Air Force. However, the reason for blocking these additional launches is acknowledged to be political, as Elon has been heavily involved in the political conversation lately. This is indeed one of the most ridiculous reasons ever, going against the right to free speech for U.S. citizens. As a result, SpaceX has not hesitated to accuse the California Coastal Commission of political discrimination against SpaceX. Even the governor of California stated clearly, I'm with Elon. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.